50 things that made the modern economy. Finished dinner and retired to his cabin aboard the SS Dresden, traveling from Belgium across the English Channel. His night clothes were laid out on his bed, but Diesel didn't change into them. The inventor of the engine that bears his name was thinking about his heavy debts and the interest payments that would soon come due. He couldn't afford them. In his diary, that date, the 29th of September, 1913, was marked with an ominous X. Before the trip, Diesel had gathered what cash he could and stuffed it into a bag, together with documents laying bare the financial mess he was in. He gave the bag to his wife, with instructions not to open it until a week had passed. She seems not to have suspected anything. Diesel stepped outside his cabin. He removed his coat, folded it, and laid it neatly on the ship's deck. He looked over the railings at the black and swirling waters below. And then he jumped. Or did he? Conspiracy theorists have speculated that Diesel was assisted overboard. But who might have had an interest in the impecunious inventor's demise? Two possible candidates have been fingered. For context, rewind another 20 years to 1872 and industrial economies where steam supplied the power for trains and factories, but urban transport depended on horses. That autumn, equine flu brought US cities to a standstill. Grocery store shelves were laid bare, saloons ran out of beer, garbage piled up in the streets. A city of half a million people might have a hundred thousand horses, each one liberally coating the streets with 15 kilos of manure and four litres of urine every day. An affordable, reliable, small-scale engine that could replace the horse would be a godsend. The steam engine was one candidate. Steam-powered cars were coming along nicely. Another was the internal combustion engine, early versions of which ran on petrol, gas or even gunpowder. But when Rudolf Diesel was a student, both types of engine were woefully inefficient. They converted only around 10% of heat into useful work. The young Diesel's life was changed by a lecture on thermodynamics at the Royal Bavarian Polytechnic of Munich where he learned that it was theoretically possible to make an internal combustion engine that would convert all heat into work. Diesel set himself the task of translating theory into practice. He fell short. His first working engine was only just over 25% efficient. Today, the best diesel engines top 50%. Even so, it was more than twice as good as what had come before. Unfortunately for Rudolf, in early versions of his engine, these efficiency gains were outweighed by reliability issues. He faced a steady stream of refund demands from unhappy customers. It was this that dug the inventor into the financial hole from which he never managed to escape. Still, he kept working at his engine, and it kept getting better. Other advantages became apparent. Diesel engines can use heavier fuel than petrol engines, Specifically, a heavier fuel that's become known as diesel. As well as being cheaper than petrol to refine from crude oil, diesel also gives off fewer fumes, so it's less likely to cause explosions. This made it particularly attractive for military transport. After all, you don't want your bombs going off accidentally. By 1904, diesel had got his engines into France's submarines. This brings us to the first conspiracy theory around Rudolf Diesel's death. In 1913 Europe, the drumbeats of impending war were quickening. The cash-strapped German was en route to London. One newspaper headline luridly speculated. Inventor thrown into the sea to stop sale of patents to British government. It was only after the First World War that Diesel's invention began to realise its commercial potential in heavier-duty transport applications than cars. 
The first diesel-powered trucks appear in the 1920s, trains in the 1930s. By 1939, a quarter of global sea trade was fuelled by diesel. After the Second World War, ever more powerful and efficient diesel engines led to ever more enormous ships. Fuel accounts for around 70% of the costs of shipping goods around the world. You can see why the scientist Václav Smil reckons that if globalisation had been powered by steam rather than diesel, trade would have grown much more slowly than it did. The economist Brian Arthur isn't so sure about that. Arthur views the rise of the internal combustion engine over the last century as an example of path dependence, a self-reinforcing cycle in which existing investments and infrastructure mean we keep doing things in a certain way, even if we'd do them differently, if only we could start from scratch. As late as 1914, Arthur argues, steam was at least as viable as crude oil for powering cars. But the growing influence of the oil industry ensured that much more money was going into improving the internal combustion engine than the steam engine. With equal investment in research and development, perhaps today we'd be driving next-generation steam-powered cars. Alternatively, if Rudolf Diesel had had his way, perhaps the global economy would run on peanuts. Diesel's name has become synonymous with a crude oil derivative, but he designed his engine to use a variety of fuels, from coal dust to vegetable oils. In 1900, at the Paris World Fair, he demonstrated a model based on peanut oil. And as the years went by, he became something of an evangelist for the cause. In 1912, a year before his death, Diesel predicted that vegetable oils would become as important a source of fuel as petroleum products. This was, no doubt, a more appealing vision for the owners of peanut farms than for the owners of oil fields. And the impetus to make it happen largely dissipated with Rudolf Diesel's death. Hence the second conspiracy theory to inspire a speculatively sensationalist headline in a contemporary newspaper. Murdered by agents from big oil trusts. There's recently been a resurgence of interest in biodiesel. It's less polluting than oil fuel, but it's controversial. It competes for land with agriculture, pushing up food prices. In Rudolf's era, this was less of a concern. The population was much smaller. The climate was more predictable. Rudolf was excited by the idea that his engine could help to develop poor agricultural economies. How different might the world look today if the most valuable land during the last hundred years wasn't where you could drill for oil, but where you could cultivate peanuts? We can only guess, just as we'll never know for sure what happened to Rudolf Diesel. By the time his body bobbed up alongside another boat, ten days later, it was too badly decomposed for an autopsy, or even for the crew to be willing to take it on board at all. They extracted from Diesel's jacket his wallet, pocket knife and spectacles case, which his son later identified. The inventor's body was reclaimed by the waves. To understand why Diesel's engine mattered, we relied upon Václav Smil's book, Prime Movers of Globalization. For a full list of our sources, see bbcworldservice.com slash 50 things 